Thanks for listening to the Thyroid Fixer podcast with your host, me, Dr. Amy Horneman, aka the Thyroid Fixer, functional medicine practitioner, hormone and weight loss expert. We're talking all things thyroid, hormone and health related in order to empower, educate and transform you. So if you're ready to get your life back, let's get started. I know we're headed into the holidays and many of you are freaking out because you are going to be face to face with a lot of yummy food. So we're going to go over five things you can do to not self-sabotage yourself over the holidays, specifically Thanksgiving that's coming up in a few days. But this can definitely extend into all the Christmas parties and Christmas itself and then New Year's and New Year's parties. Okay, so let's get into this. So this is going to be a game changer for you. And you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the fixer line is metabolism fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism And it might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there. You know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight. Add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, oh yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form. So you can drink it through your day. It's going to flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. Number one, and some of these might just seem like no-brainers, but sometimes we need to hear those no-brainers to go, you know what? Yeah, I really should do that. Number one, bring your own dishes. I don't mean plates to eat off of. I mean things that you are going to eat that you made at home that you control the ingredients and you know what's in it. And they have to be things that you like. So for example, Thanksgiving, one of my favorite things is sweet potato casserole. Now the old school way of doing it, I'm not talking about the marshmallow stuff. I mean the good stuff with the crumble. So the old school way of doing it is a ton of brown sugar, maybe some maple syrup in the mix. And then you whip up the potatoes and you're adding heavy whipping cream, which isn't horrible. You can still do that in your own version, but you're adding a ton, a ton, a ton of sugar. And then you're doing the top, the crumble, and that's oatmeal and butter and more brown sugar. That's the old school way of doing the sweet potato casserole. So if you do your own way, like I do, I whip up those sweet potatoes. I'll use monk fruit, maybe a little bit of swerve. I'll use a little bit of heavy whipping cream, but I'll also use milkadamia and I'll whip that up. Maybe some Kerrygold butter. And then my crumble, my topping, is almond flour. I just got a bag of cashew flour too. So almond flour, maybe some cashew flour, 
Kerrygold butter melted. And again, I'll use the monk fruit, the dark brown monk fruit. So it looks like brown sugar. So I'll use that, maybe some coconut palm sugar, and I'll make my own crumble. I'll leave out the oats, obviously, because oats just do nothing but spike your insulin. And that is my version that I know what's in it. I can control it. I can eat that with freedom and not add a crap ton of sugar to my already food coma that I'll probably be in. So you got the turkey. That's good protein. You're going to have a salad or maybe you make a salad and bring that along. Maybe you make a charcuterie tray of meat and cheeses and olives and bring that along for an appetizer. So you're not diving into the cookies and the chips, even before you strap on your feed bag at dinner. If you want a little bit of stuffing, because who doesn't love stovetop stuffing? So then you have a tiny little bit of that, but then the rest of your plate is filled with the good stuff, which brings me to number two, protein first. You've heard me say this in other episodes as well, but when you put the protein first, when you're eating the turkey first, even when you're eating the charcuterie board first, in the beginning to put things in your stomach so you don't go hog wild at dinner, when you focus on protein first, you're getting in that very satiating food that is going to stabilize your blood sugar and stabilize your insulin and actually help to balance you when you do eat the stuffing, when you do have five servings of the sweet potatoes, when you do eat the pumpkin pie for dessert, I'm going to get to that in a second too. So having that protein on board is going to keep you fuller longer. It's going to stabilize your blood sugar so that you don't spike super high and then drop super low. And then in the lows, that's where you're hangry and you're going back for seconds and you're going back for leftovers. And it's two hours later, dinner's put away and you're making yourself a turkey sandwich while you're watching some football. So let's get you satiated so that the hunger stays down and gone through the rest of the day protein first. And then you take small amounts of the stuffing or the mashed potatoes with the gravy. You take those small amounts and you get that taste. So you don't feel deprived. You still get that taste of it, but that's not a third of your plate is stovetop stuffing. Number three, bring your own alcohol. Why do I say this? Because holidays are filled with alcohol and I know you're going to drink, but what do most people have? They have the really sweet wine and some champagne and a whole bunch of mixed drinks with sugary mixers. So how about you bring a bottle of your organic dry farm wine? And that's what you are drinking because you know it's dry and it's low in sugar. Maybe you bring your own Mixers, you bring the club soda, you bring the fresh lime juice. If your thing is vodka and whatever, or tequila or a margarita or gin and tonic, then you bring your own mixers so that you're not a slave to whatever your host has on hand, which is going to be a bottle of Coke, a bottle of some kind of seven up, which is loaded with sugar too. They're going to have the pre-made mixers that you get that at the liquor store. So bring your own, bring your own. Or next step, don't do the alcohol at all. Why? Because we know that alcohol stops the fat burning process, stops it completely. So when you consume alcohol and you're consuming all of that other food, you're consuming all of those carbs, you're consuming, let's just face it, a crap ton of calories. I mean, let's just face it. So when you consume all of that at the same time as you are taking in alcohol, you are stopping the fat burning process. So your body literally can't even deal with that huge Thanksgiving meal that you just had. And what it will do is it will more likely store that as fat when alcohol is combined. Because here's what the body does. It goes, okay, alcohol is coming in and we know it's, almost like a foreign substance. So we have proteins, carbs, and fats over here. That's what we have to deal with. That's what we have to utilize for energy because we can't use the alcohol for energy because it's like, it's nothing. It's empty. There's no nutritional value whatsoever. And it's also this weird foreign substance. It doesn't fall into the macronutrient category. So your body says, okay, we have to get rid of this poison 
this toxin. So in order to do that, we're going to shut down the metabolic processes of burning stored body fat for fuel, of actually tapping into a person's fat stores, of actually utilizing the proteins, carbs, and fats that you just ate. It's going to say, nope, forget it. What we're going to do is push that into storage, i.e. your fat. It's going to push everything that you just ate into fat storage, and then it's going to deal with the alcohol, and then it can shift back over into dealing with your food, but we don't know how long that is. We don't know if that takes 24 hours and you are literally not burning anything for 24 hours, or we don't know if it takes five hours. We don't know. We just know that the body does this. So if you can avoid alcohol completely while you are consuming all that yummy Thanksgiving food or Christmas food, you're going to be better off. Save it, have a couple drinks on the weekend when you're just kind of picking at leftovers, not when you're consuming the big ass huge meal that is also very calorie laden. It's going to still, I mean, as much as you make your own food and take it, you're still going to enjoy some treats. Let's be real. And at least without the alcohol on board, you have a fighting chance. Yeah, you got a fighting chance. Okay, I mentioned, this is a side note. This isn't number four. This is just a side note of pumpkin pie. That can be also something that you can make. And that would probably be even a better idea than the sweet potato casserole because we know that the pumpkin pie is crazy. I mean, you have a ton, of, ton, ton of carbs in the crust and then a ton of sugar in the pie itself. There are so many, and I just say keto because that's going to be lower in carbs. That's where you're going to find the recipes for, let's say, an almond flour crust that's low in sugar. You're going to find a pumpkin pie or a cheesecake pumpkin pie recipe under keto. So you could look at paleo or keto pumpkin pie recipes and make your own. And even if you're the third pie come into the dinner table, you can eat from that. And even if cousin Bobby says, ew, what is this horrible pie? Well, Bobby, you don't have to eat it. You can hang out there and be your 300 pounds. I got different goals in mind. I'm going to eat my pie and you can go over and you can eat the shitty ass sugar pie, right? That's exactly what you have to do to save you. Look out for you. Don't worry about what other people at the dinner table are going to think if you're eating healthy. You know, there, there's actually health shaming, and this is another podcast, right? But just like we have fat shaming, we have health shaming. And I've been through it. I have been there and done that where people look at you weird and they make comments and it's all out of jealousy. It's all because they don't want to take control of their health. They don't want to take care of themselves or they don't have the mental fortitude to actually do so. So they have to put you down for doing it so that they feel better, so that they feel more normal in their eating like garbage and treating their body like it's Las Vegas. They feel justified in that if you're doing that too. But if you step it up a notch and and you go high order with your health, it's going to make those people that are chirping at you just feel worse about themselves and they can't take that. So that's where health shaming comes in. I know that was a side note, but I felt it very applicable, especially during the holidays when you are around a ton of friends and family. And that's really kind of where you shine And that's really where you can get health shame too by the people that love you because they're jealous. Okay, so we went over bring your food. We went over the alcohol component. I want to also address some behavioral and supplemental components that you can add in as well. So behavioral, the morning of, let's say Thanksgiving, let's just take it because it's what, a couple of days from now, the morning of, one day, Thanksgiving, I want you to get up and get a good workout in and I want you to lift heavy shit. LHS, you know, hats are available now on my website. You can get one that says LHS. LHS, because what that's going to do, and I don't care whether you go to the gym, if they have limited hours, go out in your garage, do push-ups. Do do dips off of a chair and push-ups. Activate those muscles 
Because as you deplete your glycogen stores in your muscle, now you are going to be more apt to be able to deal with the heavy meal that's coming down the pipe. So you go to the gym, you lift heavy, and let's say you actually don't eat right after the gym. So you're working out in a fasted state, and then you don't feed yourself as soon as you leave the gym, which is not a bad thing because you just got a nice little boost in testosterone and growth hormone. And that's going to continue. So if you can make it another hour or two after you leave the gym and then have something small, have a protein shake, have something, get something on your stomach that is just strictly protein to satiate you, to get you to dinner. But now you've taken advantage of not loading back up your glycogen stores with carbohydrates because that's going to come in later. You've taken advantage of that heavy workout, depleting your glycogen stores, lowering your glucose, lowering your insulin response, giving your body protein as a building block to rebuild that lean, sexy muscle tissue that you just tore down, which is what we want to do in a workout. And then a few hours after that is where you consume your largest meal, Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner. What that does is it's not necessarily that you're intermittent fasting. And that's the point of what we're doing. That's not it at all. What we're doing is actually stimulating your muscles to deplete those carbohydrate stores, because that's what glycogen is. It's from your carbohydrate intake, your sugar intake, and that fills the vats in the muscle fills those glycogen stores up, and then those will slowly deplete to nothing. And then your body can switch over and burn your stored body fat. That's why I don't like it when people eat before they work out, especially carbohydrates, because then your entire workout is spent burning off those carbohydrates instead of tapping into your fat stores for fuel. Now we have this whole thing about the after exercise burn which there is some scientific evidence to that. So not only are you getting that little bit of a post-exercise burn, but you're also getting the increased growth hormone and the increased testosterone boost naturally from that fasted state workout. And then as you continue to go another hour or two hours post-workout without eating, you get an even bigger benefit from that. Now, sometimes you're just starving after workout, and I get that. You can absolutely eat. If you are starving after workout, go ahead and eat because you still got the benefits of the workout. And last but not least, this would be the time to have some blood sugar fixer on hand, to have some berberine on hand. Because what you can do is not, I mean, listen, if you're insulin resistant, you should be taking this every day. And if you are taking blood sugar fixer, if you're taking it twice a day, On those days, such as Thanksgiving, Christmas, you can add in a third. You can absolutely bump that that dose up and add in a third blood sugar fixer so that you have better stabilization of your glucose and your insulin. Because like we said earlier, when you spike high, you're going to drop low. Those highs, that's where you're going to be in fat storage mode. The lows are when you're going to be hangry. So what berberine does blood sugar fixer it comes in and it stabilizes that curve so instead of looking like a roller coaster now you're looking like like a nice wave like pattern and that's where that stabilized blood sugar occurs so you never get super high you never get super low you never go into fat storage mode and then you also do not go into hangry eating everything in sight mode which you don't need that either because realistically and you know this If you think about it, when you consume more carbs and sugar, either that day or the next day, you are starving. Like you can't even, it's like when I go on my seafood diet, right? And when I'm so hungry, everything I see, I eat. And that is definitely dysregulated blood sugar, glucose, elevated insulin. You're on a roller coaster, blood sugar roller coaster. That is why that happens. So when you stabilize it, and you take berberine consistently, you're probably not going to get hit as hard on these overeating days, these holidays, as you would if you had not been taking it. But if you're not taking it yet, grab some, have it on hand for just these times, 
And maybe you take it from literally now until mid-January because you know that you are going to be face-to-face with all of these holiday parties and dinners and family get-togethers, all of that. So if you can do all of these things, very simple steps, and you get some berberine on board, I'm telling you, you might get through, you will get through these holidays not gaining a pound. And dare I say, you might actually lose. I'm doing a lot of education this this week, a lot of education on the power of T2, how it increases your basal metabolic rate. You can add that in. I'm talking a ton about optimizing your hormones. There are so many things you can do that you might actually lose some weight too over the holidays. And wouldn't that be something different from years past? All right, implement these steps, have a beautiful holiday season, and let me know how you do. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I hope you loved it. And as always, if you would be so kind to leave a review, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, that would be absolutely amazing. I read all of them. Also, anything that you hear on this podcast is not intended to diagnose or treat any kind of medical condition. So we always recommend that you check with your medical provider, your doctor, your nurse practitioner before implementing anything that you hear on this podcast. And if you want to find out more about working together, you can click the link below in the show notes to book a discovery call. And there you'll be talking to a member of my team. They are an extension of me. They are amazing. And you and I will talk after that once we get you all signed up and you and I get to work together. All right, I hope to see you soon.